So thank you all for being here. And my good friend, Frank Mitliner, assures me that all the right people are in the room for this conference today. So thank you for taking time out to be here for what I think is a really, 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 really important topic. And that is feed, cows, enteric fermentation. Well, not just cows, but primarily cows is what we're going to be talking about. And I don't have to tell you, because I'm talking to a room full of scientists, why it is so important. And that is because of the 108 countries and subnationals that signed the Global Methane Reduction Pledge prior to COP26 in 2021 to reduce methane emissions as a short-lived climate pollutant to really focus on the right things that can make the biggest difference in the shortest period of time to help us really slow down, if not completely stop, climate change. So important. And I was very pleased that it just happened to be the first COP that I ever went to after asking for years in the Brown administration where we could only send two people because we were always watching the budget that I got to be there in Glasgow because California was the only one that could sit on the stage and talk about this is what we are doing. And this is the investment that we are making. And we are very proud of our dairy families who have stepped up to be terrific partners to help us in our goals to reduce methane emissions. These short-lived climate pollutants really are things that we have a lot of answer to answers to right now. But we also know with science and rapidly evolving technology, we're just at the beginning of new solutions. And that's really why this conference is so important. I was telling Frank that um, I had a picture. If I was going to use one picture today, it would be of this really sweet cow that I met in Denmark a couple of weeks ago. Because she just leaned into my camera, and all you can see is her nose. And I said, you know, after spending the last few years of focusing on the back end of the cow with dairy digesters and alternative manure management practices, and only CDFA had a manure task force to look at byproducts and innovative products, we're focusing on the right end of the cow, the front end of the cow. And that's what you all are going to be spending two days on. So it is exciting, and I'm proud of you for doing this work. In addition to thanking our dairy families, I want to thank our staff at CDFA who have partnered here with UC Davis, Ag and Environmental Sciences, in putting this conference together in really record time. It was an idea that we came up with as we were fortunate enough through the legislative actions signed by the governor in the budget to receive some significant funding to really focus on enteric fermentation and what are the solutions? Are there things that we could be doing by working together to find those solutions? We've already put out $1 million for some preliminary proposals, and I just met one of the researchers from here on campus a few minutes ago. We have another $10 million that we can focus on these projects for. This conference is an important part of helping us develop our roadmap. It's about bringing together scientists, researchers, experts of all phases, the dairy community, our regulatory sister agencies and ourselves to really understand, get a level set of where are we in the state of the science? Where are the barriers to additional solutions? Where are the, the best opportunities? And what all is going to be needed for us to achieve what we all hope will be solutions, but we also recognize the vast majority of those are going to require registration. And so understanding that regulatory process and why it is the process that it is, what it means for the health of the cow, what it means for ensuring that there's no impact to the products of the cow, and that, that we, have, we have really done the thorough work with the data that's necessary to make the best decisions, and then working with our federal partners at the Food and Drug Administration who are already in the process of evaluating at least one or two products to make sure that we in California are doing our part as the number one dairy state in the country of bringing forth data to help us here. We also have to be very, very mindful of what the hesitation might be with dairy producers themselves. 
And I'm saying that because I'm mindful today, just having been in Corcoran with the governor just last Tuesday, the flood impacts to our dairies is like inordinate compared to many of our row crops. I mean, it includes all those row crops. But when you have a herd of the genetically perfect cows that you've built over generations, and all of a sudden you have floodwaters coming at you, and you and your neighbors are doing your best to relocate them, and you're calling the Department of Food and Agriculture to do temporary emergency permits to keep the milking going, to get that product into streams of commerce, there is tremendous pressure that we're looking at over the next three to four months of continued flooding events that are going to happen. And a lot of that feels like it's aimed directly at our dairies. They have unbelievable economic pressures and marketplace pressures. Their number one concern is the health of their herd. But it also, they want to make sure that when we roll out products and solutions, that they're technically feasible and that they're economically feasible for the kinds of cost pressures that they're facing today. So I'm really pleased to welcome you to this conference. I hope you share my enthusiasm for all things cows and poo and enteric fermentation and the first circular economy instrument we have, a dairy cow. When we think about the food waste to feed, dairy cows have been part of a circular economy before we even called it a circular economy. So with that, I wanna thank, I wanna thank Virginia Jamison, our deputy secretary. I wanna thank Tani Mata, if you haven't met Tani yet. She is our new program supervisor for our Office of Environmental Farming and Innovation. Um, Charles Brook is one of the folks from our terrific, brilliant team of scientists and methane emission programs. Thank you for your work on this. I wanna thank our partners at CARB, who are absolutely critical to our success as we work through methodologies for whatever the solutions are that we do find. And I want to thank um, many of the interested members of the legislature, some who have sent staff to be here today or who are listening online. That's the kind of interest we have here. It's because we see the real world possibilities and know that there are opportunities as long as we can be realistic about what the barriers are, what the capital investment will be, and what the registration process will be for the time that it takes to get to those solutions. So thank you all for your great work. We couldn't be doing it at a better campus than UC Davis. So I'm really appreciative, Frank, of all the work that you've done, you and your colleagues, um, to be able to launch this work from here and to have it lead to a roadmap for success with what we need in research, both short-term, intermediate, and long-term, and any other issues that you identify is going to be absolutely critical to the continued success of our fabulous number one commodity in the state of California, dairy. Healthy California dairy. Thank you all very much for allowing me a few minutes to speak today.